Now, if you're just tuning in, we're discussing China's loan to Nigeria. Please let us know your concerns and fears if you have any, and let's hear what you have to say. Remember to join this conversation. Tweet at us as Plus TV Africa or at Waysho Africa One with the hashtag Waze, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. Now, uh, we have, we have a, an SMS from... Um, a, um, a viewer, I think his name is Kunle, say hello ladies, good show. The lady on blue jeans, her name is Uti, um, <laughs> said Nigerian government collects loans for recurrent. This is not true because the government collects loans for capital projects and the Chinese loan is, uh, real, is a real project and that is a capital project. Okay, we, I think we already mentioned that. But I wanted to ask, um, let me come to Mo. I wanted to ask Mo a question about the strategy because I know that getting a loan in itself is not a bad thing, right? Is there a right strategy, you know, so that you can manage the risk and the exposure and, you know, go about it in a smart way? Can you borrow to, um, to service a debt? I don't know how to explain it, but is there a, a strategy to borrowing? And if there's a strategy, are we getting that strategy right as a country? Well, yeah, there is a strategy to borrowing. I mean, the reason why you borrow is to provide infrastructure and hopefully the infrastructure in turn... Um, you know, uh, provide income, jobs, and even so that you can easily pay off the loan. But if you don't have such tra a strategy in place, then then why borrow? Because the whole attractiveness of borrow is there, borrowing is there, but when you have to repay these loans, you know, number one, it comes with interest. Number two, our uh, currency is very volatile. And, you know, since 1990, the currency has depreciated consistently and double-digit figure. Right now, we don't even know what the rates are 400 and something it is and uh, so all those things are important when it, when it comes to borrowing i mean borrowing is what you do need uh to to um borrow to increase infrastructure and provide all the services that you need but at the end of the day there are things you need to pay off and you know the gentleman uh doctor i think aji was his name he is he made some some points that you know uh we in the in nigeria we don't have accountability systems we're not transparent enough and we don't have the ability to manage this loan and to make sure that it's actually uh, geared to what it's going to what it's going to be. I mean, one naira paying ninety six cobble for every one naira to, towards debt, you know, is is obscene and it's grotesque. And I think you know it it almost qualifies as you know probably mortgaging one's future. As some of the news um, media outlets have, have put out there. So we're seeing the case of not just. Uh, made in China, okay. perhaps owned by Chinese. Okay, let, let me come to um, Yusuf before, before we come back to you more. Um, because we're talking about, I, I remember you talking about our economy being a mono economy, we're dependent on oil. So as we continue to know, because I don't know if the price of oil is coming up back up, but it's still tricky. It will come up, it will go down, it will come up, it will go down. With this dwindling oil price, um, Yusuf, if you can hear me, um, with the dwindling oil price, you know, what do you think would be you know, the advice for the Nigerian government right now, because, I mean, um, we're not making enough money, Absolutely. and we're taking a lot of loans, you know, and our income, that the only thing that we, we are carrying on our head, oil, 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 I mean, the whole world is moving away from that. So what do you think should be, you know, um, the way forward? Yusuf, are you there? Or is he there? He's not okay, there. yeah, I'm there. I'm Go here. ahead. So, okay, so if you look at it, um, most of the questions we are asking, or the, most of these questions, sometimes what I've noticed is the government itself is actually giving some of those solutions. But when I say the solutions, they feel like this is the way forward. So some, I think about last month or two months ago, the vice president released um, an economic plan that was actually referring to what were the steps Nigeria are going to take um, after COVID. So this point you actually mentioned just now was actually one of the points uh, they actually, actually noted in that document. That plan noted that we can't keep them relying on oil because of the, um, the prices. So it's a volatile state, basically. So in, in, in actually recognizing this, what do we need? What are the other structural, uh, what's it called, industries that we need to ensure that there is less dependence on oil? Nigeria actually is a consumer nation, so we actually import most of what we do, most of if, even even some of what was it called these um, projects that we are actually um, financing through the loan, they actually imported from China. So when you look at it, we, we consume a lot, we don't produce, we don't export. So we need to think and change our narrative when it comes to 
this world has to do with value. What value are you exchanging for some from something else? For actually, for me to actually have, um, let's say, returns. So it's it's it has to do with the thinking that we need to diversify from oil, but it's it's beyond um, diversify diversify from oil. Actually, it's about looking at the other um, what's it called um, sectors in the economy. How are they performing? What's what are the stimulants that you need to actually boost employment, agriculture, ICT, and so many other areas to ensure that. Everyone in Nigeria is actually, uh, let's say, um, active. But when I say everyone, I'm actually referring to the um, employable age, basically. So for me, it's beyond um, just um, looking towards the oil itself, but looking at how we can ensure that industries in Nigeria are actually working. Because once they start working, they can employ people. Government itself cannot actually employ everyone. And once you see employment improve, what it means is that people are going to spend money more, taxes are going to be paid, the industries themselves are going to actually not only produce, they will make sure that everyone is actually, um, let's say, engaged, or people are actually engaged. That means there's less crime. And once they produce also, they can also export. So we need to start thinking of how we can add value, let's say, to the total economy itself, if I can use that word, how we can ensure that Nigeria itself is sending something out to other countries. If I look at the trade relations between Nigeria and China, for instance, or if I actually Africa, but let's say Nigeria and China, they are actually giving us more than we are giving them. So what's the value? And if you if you look around you today, most of the people that are around the public are traders. What do they do? They import from China. So we need to start rethinking the way we are approaching our, our policies to ensure that even the common man on the streets is looking at okay, how does this actually affect my country? How does this make sure that every five naira I spend is going to someone's else's pockets within Nigeria and is ensuring the economy itself is boosted. How does the government itself, whenever they want to spend money, are you importing or are you making sure that you can stimulate what's called local producers? So local content, for instance, is very, very important Absolutely. in ensuring that... Okay, when so because we are running drive, out of time, Uti, quickly. Are... Uh, so, sorry, <laughs> Mustafa, we want to get a lot of questions. Is We have a lot of comments from the audience who have not taken it. But let us quickly, you know, so you, you want to go back to Mo? Um, so, yeah, I'll just stay on the issue of, of credibility because, again, these loans are easy to take, um, as you have said. But how do we begin to make ourselves more credible to the organizations whose terms and conditions we can't meet right now? Because if we continue in the way that we're going, we will most likely end up with just Chinese debt, as they're the only ones who are willing to borrow in our current state. So what can we really start to do to build up our credibility, to be able to move so away from more. this? Yes, to okay. I think a lot of what we need to do, first of all, we need to break down certain bottlenecks. I mean, I hear the, the other, um, my other speaker yes, here sir. saying that um, we, know we need to look internally to export, and, and that's a great thing to do. However, when you look at uh, giants that are trying to export tomatoes, but the transportation system is non-existent in terms of the road, there are no roads to transport it from one city to the other, then it begs the fact that you can't even export one of the, our biggest uh, commodities. So that becomes a problem. Um, in terms of building credibility, so we need to all look a lot of the stuff we need to do is internal, to be honest. Uh, a lot of uh, agents, agencies within the country, they make it frustrating to do simple um, businesses and streamline systems in Nigeria and processes. And it's so frustrating because uh, I give an example. Uh, you know, air, planes come to Nigeria. We could easily export a lot of things, but they actually got to a point where they were putting bags to wait so that the, the, the weight on the airplanes could be well balanced. All of those things, we need to, we need to, we need to um, address those things. We need to ensure that, um, you know, we, we have our books right. We have um, the debt we've incurred this year alone is astronomical because we're still a modern economy, 940 something um, billion. But then again, that's exactly what we paid in terms of uh, uh, debt. Every income we're, we're using to service debt. So um, those a lot of things need to be put in right, right internally. Um, some of the, uh, I, I remember reading the report of, of the World Bank wanting us to stabilize our currency to make it one currency because we, they realized that we had diff different, um, you know, on the win national window is 369 to the dollar. The black market, market is this, this, and they wanted us to stabilize that. And, you know, all, all the central bank governor definitely has to has to work on that. So all those things we need to put right to attract um, loans uh, on the agencies. But let, let, let's get something straight. It's not, even if you address um, what is internal and try to get loans and other agencies, you still have to pay those loans back. 
their loans. And to be honest, if you look at the Chinese loans at 2.5% per annum, um, with a seven-year moratorium, 20-year turnover, those are not bad terms, to be honest, on the face of it. It's the collateral and what we need to give up uh, ag as against those loans that will that, no. that is really that really wastes no, us. Sorry There's to no cut you. Would, would we even loans. have the power? So I think that Mo, the point is that even if you take out those loans, you know, we have to make sure our internal sources are credible, are accountable. Those monies are spent in the infrastructural development so that we're able to generate income and pay off those loans. Mo, I was going to ask you that. You were saying something about, oh, now I'm trying to, I'm losing my thought. But you said something <laughs> about um, negotiating the collateral, right? Do we even have the mouth to negotiate collateral? Well, we, do, we are going like cap in hand to these Chinese companies. So do we even have the, 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 the political, uh, no, it's not political it's the power, the, the power to, to say, oh, this is, uh, no, I cannot give you this. I can't. We can't negotiate because we are like, you know, I, begging. And I think you make a very key point there. The truth of the matter is that we, it's, we don't have the negotiating power because of the fat cat and pocket and deep pockets involved. Yeah. These same loans, the Chinese presented to the Americans and they will never take those loans. Exactly. They presented to the Europeans, they will never take those loans because oh, they will never sign any of those stringent conditions. In fact, I remember reading a, a report whereby when the when the, when they come to negotiating tables, they said, oh, if it's an African country, oh, come on, we'll wrap this up within an hour or two. We know exactly what they want. But if it's the Europeans or the American counterparts, we wrap it up, it takes days, weeks and months Remember, don't forget that uh, the big, biggest debtor uh, is, is America. Mm -hmm. They owe over a trillion dollars to Chinese. And they don't come with those stringent conditions that we little African countries are owing. You know, um, Zambia owes what, 7 billion. We owe 3 billion. Mm -hmm. Venezuela owes 19 billion. And so on and so forth. But yet, the conditions attached to those loans is completely so that means they have a strategy. But let's so take some it. comments from our audience. God bless you ladies for this topic and a big thanks to the, your guest in Kenya. Her name is Mo. Now, Nigerian government should please not mortgage our future. The loan is a very big trap for the future. Nigeria, um, Nigerian cor uh, corrupt nature cannot allow us pay back the loan and China will eventually take over our ports. If China gets Nigeria, they got the whole of Africa. That, but this guy did not put his, um, his um, name. Then um, Taufik says, I think we should be asking questions on how these loans have been spent. How economical is the cost of building this rail with other countries with similar rail projects? If Chinese are going to be maintaining this project, what do our labor forces stand to gain? Because I see more Chinese taking up jobs from Nigeria. Chinese are not our friends. That's uh, from Taufik. Then um, John says... John, oh, Eric says, the Chinese understand our political system, that our political system is very porous, and our politicians can be brought, but oh, so God. we should not expect Chinese to care. For us. To care, we must take care of ourselves. Now, we have so many comments. Angela is saying, I am worried we have politicians signing agreements at the expense of our country. These people bring money expertise without transfer. They bring all Chinese staff into the country. Then Aya is saying, have we seen Chinese people coming in, in finance space in Nigeria in large numbers with a full Chinese team and little or, or no oversight on them? I think Nigeria should start protecting Nigerians. So you should say, she's saying Nigeria first. Now, Emeka says, the East can be our, um, can be our China with a serious government. With the right uh, willpower, we will change how we do business as little as palm oil still being imported. We okay. have so many comments, but let me just uh, quickly um, tie up one of the comments. Um, well, we have so many comments, but let me quickly ask about this, this porous nature. And maybe let me come to... Um, Yusuf. Yusuf. Mustafa. Mustafa. <laughs> Porous nature. Then Uti, what's your question? My Is question it for Yusuf? Is to Mo. Okay, no, okay. To Mo. Let's let's quickly take Yusuf. Mm. Quickly, what do you think about the porous nature of the politic politicians and how it affects us in Nigeria? So what do you think we should start demanding as Nigerians? In in one minute. Okay, so Okay, so from the comments I got, uh, from the comments you just read now, what I still see is where we've done this for several years, where we keep on complaining, complaining. But you can complain and talk about this from today to probably 50 years without taking action. So once we, look, we have to look at the structure. 
The executive, for instance, is the one that went into the loan agreement. Um, uh, the Ministry of um, Justice is in charge of um, what's called signing these agreements. Mm -hmm. The legislature itself, they represent us. So they are to actually ask the questions. And anytime there is a budget um, session or the budget defense session, they should actually ask questions about, okay, this project, and like someone actually sent a text, they're asking that. We, what, what we should actually be looking at is this project, we, there's nothing we can do about it right now because about um, eight of them, the funds have been dispersed for them. So what we need to start asking is, what are we doing with those, um, what's it called, those loans? Are we making sure that there is accountability? Are, are we making place. sure that yeah. there is implementation? Because it's not enough for you to borrow without seeing what's, what, what is the, or what I say, the effect of what you're doing. Okay, so because we are running out of for. time. So <laughs> for, 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 Sorry, uh, you when it comes to um, the, you asked about poor nation, I, I, I don't I actually don't want to focus on politicians. What I'm going to say is this: as the Nigerians, because or as a Nigerian, basically, because the there was a what was it called? There was a study on the cost of corruption in Nigeria, and it was said that more than 17 million Nigerians paid bribes to um, public officials, and that was costing us about 675 billion naira. What does that mean? That means there's a lot of money that actually should go to the government itself. That's not going there. And Nigerians are willing to cooperate with anybody that is corrupt. Let's put it that way. So we, we, we tend to focus on the politicians, but politicians are probably how many percentage of the population itself. So if we do not allow that conducive environment for such activities thrive. to thrive, okay. I don't think they will have so much power over us. All right. Quickly. Okay. My question is to Mo. Basically, as a, as a wealth generation expert, what, will, what, is your, um, what will be your advice to the government of Nigeria on how to restructure the loan and, and how, how to, to generate, generate wealth. wealth. <laughs> and how to generate wealth. So we start borrowing the loan and generate wealth. To be again, I, I allude to the fact that the actual terms of the loan, I know the collateral is a bit can be a bit horrendous, especially when you're dealing with Chinese loans. And there's a reason why there's been a lot of um, uh, people like uh, Syria Loan and Tanzania have decided to to pay off their loans. Um, in terms of my my uh, advice to the government, you've got to look internally. Everything starts internally before you go external. And sometimes the infrastructure might infrastructure you're trying to build it might take uh, much longer. Uh, but there's nothing as good as a good old organic growth. Yeah. You know, I, I relate that to, as an entrepreneur and, you know, when you're, you're starting out your business, you're so excited because you think you have the best idea in the world exactly. and you're so certain that it's going to make you great money mm -hmm. and you're going to go out there and get loans and, 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 and very soon reality sets in. It, it's taking much longer, it's much harder than you expected and you, you're saddled with debts that you cannot pay off. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's the same for a country. You know, you have to look internally, organic growth, um, start with organic growth and um, build your citizens, you Absolutely. know, provide the basic infrastructure that you can build and then d d build it from the ground up. But you have to focus on exports. And let's not forget China today, everybody's talking about made in China, China owned con uh, China con colonialism and all of those things. Um, but China was once a very poor country. Exactly. What did they do differently? They looked internally and they took advantage of this huge population they had and they put them to work. And all of a sudden, years later, everybody's going to China for loans, going to China for for uh, wealth and so and and for infrastructure and so on and so Technology. forth. So definitely, we've got to look internally. And Nigerians are oh, smart. We are we are extremely resourceful. We are hardworking people. But we just need that uh, you know that support we can get internally, and we'll we will grow. It might take much longer, yeah, but definitely. we will eventually get Thank there. Thank you so much, Mo. I don't even know how the time just went by <laughs> but we definitely have to bring this topic back again because we have too many comments and questions that that we did not even take someone says consistently the leadership style uh, has proven gross incompetence and lack and that is why we have lack of patriotism in nigeria mm -hmm. I, I i couldn't agree more with this um this, this comment but i think um summing it i want our leaders to understand the impact this is going to have on the nigerian citizen mm -hmm. and the impact it will have on our image as nigeria on our, on our economy and the, on our citizen, the, the, you and I, our daily life, 
you know, I want them to put that in consideration whenever they are signing some of these things. But we would have to bring back this topic and we'll bring back our guests. <laughs> so please, thank you so much, Mo, and thank you so much, Mustafa, for coming. Now, please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode at 3 p.m. tomorrow. It's been a very, very insightful conversation. We, we, do, we do not have time. So keep the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Way Show Africa and at Plus TV Africa to so continue to hear what you're saying. Let me thank my co anchors Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. That's Proverbs 22, 7. You will continue to be a slave to your lender. So we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening.